Hello, hello. My name is Eric Kamamba. Welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I am going to discuss about SQL functions for data analysis. And uh, this is a continuation <coughs> of this series. Um, on the previous video, we discussed about string function. And now I am going to discuss about um, aggregate function. Before going further, let's understand what an aggregate function is. So in a simple language, an aggregate function calculates, calculates um, on a set of values and return a single value. In a database, we call that a scalar value. Okay, and uh, examples of um, aggregate functions, we do have uh, count, sum, maximum, minimum, average, just to mention the few. So before wasting any further time, Let's go ahead and um, see how they work. Okay, so first I'm going to use AdventureX database. And if you're following on the previous video, you know why we are doing this. And all we are going to do today is aggregate functions. So I will go ahead and start with um, a very simple function, which is, and I'm going to put numbers here so that we know how many we have done so far, count. So this is one of the most important function, and uh, it returns the number of records from a column in a table. So I'm going to say returns the number of records from a column in a table. Some definition they say returns number of records or number of rows in a table, but I'm I'll explain why I say in a column later on. And you're going to see that. <clears throat> so I'll start with um, a famous uh, database. And we have been using, I think, employees. So if you execute this um, and scroll down, I get about 290 rows. As you can see, there are 290 row business IDs, and you can see the number of returned rows is 290. So to use a count, really, um, we can go ahead and use this. And uh, all it does is this. So all you need is you use count, and then because the function, for example, now I'm counting the rows in a, when I say all, I say in a, all columns. So I get the value which is 290. And you can rename this as simple as this. You give it column errors and if you execute now, you can see there's no column name. And if you execute, you're going to get column name and play count 290. And you can give it a space, but remember to uh, use square brackets. Okay, so that's count. So literally, you can choose um, to use a column name here. So let's try to specify a column. Okay, first, I'm going to eliminate this and I'm going to run this to see. Uh, I'll give you an example. So if you use business entity, we're going to get the same number of rows. I think national number, same number of rows. 
account and we can see so if you're an account business entity we can go ahead and say this i can type business entity here and count that and i'm expecting to see the same value so if i do this i'll get 290 and i'm gonna write my statement here so that i can run it anytime to see number of columns so i can choose to use maybe a different one which probably i can say national id number which is this one here and let's see how much you, how many columns you get we get 290 so that's how we use count however um now um i'm going to try to use something else which is organization id and see how many we get and i'll explain further what's going on here so it's organization node i think so if you execute this i get about 289 and the reason is can someone tell me it's because count um count only the values it doesn't count now value so if you execute again you can see there's one value which is now and uh, most likely we did have 290 yeah so it's just one value we have 289 or so there's one value which is now and if you want to figure that out uh, if you do have a lot of records you can write your statement as well organization level is now to return now values if you like to see now values and you can see there's only one null value but again if you don't want to return now values you can return the value so you can say where organization level is not now and you can inspect your data and see there are like 289 rows okay so whenever you're doing count uh, um, depending on what you're trying to count so you can um, just go ahead and insert the value when you use a uh, let's say something like um let me run this uh like a business entity id we know this is a primary key and a foreign key and then uh, one of the rules is a foreign a, a primary key can not be now so you want to make sure that uh you know that and uh you will always get the number of rows uh, in a table uh, whenever you use business uh, um, uh, entity ID which is a primary key so whenever you have a table you're trying to count the number of rows you can use a uh, business ID but depending on what you're trying to accomplish you can use um, 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 other methods really and um, this count to be honest you can as well um uh, use with a where cause and we'll see later on down the road but uh, to give you like a quick yeah quick example for example you you want to count or you want to count of how many employees have a, a let's say design engineer title you can still count and all you need is to add the where clause and you can say um, employee type i mean uh, job title equals to um design engineer so let's see how many are there we have three of them and you can verify this when you um adding a where clause here to get the total count but if you want to return a scala value which is just one value we use that aggregate function so if we execute this you will find that number so we we'll see how to use where clause and aggregate function but let's now for now let's go ahead and just um, um understand uh, these five aggregate functions i'm, I'm going to show you so that's count let's go ahead and uh, use a second one let's see another one which is gonna be um, 
here we don't have proper data here for oh okay yeah we do have i can see our, our vacation hours and um sick leave uh, so we're gonna just use one here this is a perfect table for my example so the second one um is sum this is another aggregate function and um, 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 this really uh, calculates their uh, totals. Um, yeah, their total. So if you have um, a column which lists uh, uh, cells, you like to find the total amount, the uh, each maybe each salesman sold something you can go ahead and uh, use that uh, really okay but for my sake here i'll just go ahead and i uh, use uh, because we have this data here um i'm going to use uh, vacation hours so if you like to calculate the total number of vacation hours for all employees um you just have to write your query i'm just gonna copy and paste i am going to change this to vacation hours and all i need to change this is so this really calculates the total sum of values in a column Okay, so uh, when I do this, um, execute the statement, this is what I'm going to get. So to return all this, so if you take the number of um, vacation, um, for all employees, that's the number, and if you like, to you let's say um, check if your formula works really for example we can take the first two here uh, which you can specify in a where cause where business entity is less than three and then you get the first two gonna be hundred let's check that i like validating my formula because sometimes we are human and we can make some mistakes so if I execute this query, it's just going to return the first two queries because they're less than two. And I'm expecting to see a hundred. So for sure, I know my formula works. Um, and uh, you can expand your aware calls to get more uh, values if you want to do uh, uh, a good validation, um, a large number, a large data set. So uh, we're gonna go like this without using any um, uh, where calls here. We, and then once you understand how this works, we can go ahead and uh, uh, use a where calls and other uh, single uh, calls. Okay, I don't want to confuse you too early for that so the next one is um, average and you can guess already it calculates the average okay so for example if you change this to uh, um, average that means you're gonna calculate the average like what um, So the actually the, the command is AVG. I was just thinking. Um, so the average really calculates the average of, um, uh, for example, this one is vacation hours. So the average calculates average um, of uh, vacation hours, hours for all employees. And also, uh, you guys know the average equals to total sum of our total count. Literally, um, 
Uh, let's first see this and I'll show you guys uh, what I'm talking about. Execute. I get 50. So average will returns. The average of values in a column. Okay, so we know average mathematically equals to sum divided by count. So literally, it's equals to a total sum, total summation of uh, values divided by the number of those values. So we can technically do this sum of vacation hours. And I can just copy here. Divide by count. And I hope I get the correct result, which is 50. Oh, it's 50. So, yeah. So, but instead of doing this, we do use a function. And that's um, um, really good because it saves us time. So that's another way to um, prove that your calculation is right or the function is doing right. But you really don't have to because this has been done multiple times and um, works perfectly. And um, uh, uh, using average really helps. For example, here um, you have a wrong table or um, um, the database returns a zero count. For some reason, maybe you do have your where calls and all that. It returns a zero count here. Um, you cannot divide a number by zero. You're gonna get an error. So I'm gonna change this to zero and see. So you can see divide by zero error encounter. So for some reason, if you do calculation and uh, um, your count returns a zero when there's no rows. And it may happen, you may run into issues. So sometimes if you're using average, you rather use the function than um, doing this. Unless if you really have to, then you're gonna have to find uh, your write a function to check. If it's zero, then they have to use a different value to return a different answer. Like if it's zero, you can return a statement saying um, um, uh, the total count is zero or something. Okay. Um, uh, the other function I'm going to find uh, I'm going to discuss today is minimum, which returns the minimum number. Returns minimum 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 number. So how do you do this? Uh, we can use two vacation hours, so I can, um, because I'm lazy, I'm going to copy my statement and change this to min. So this will be the minimum number of, of vacation hours, which is zero, which I expect some employees don't have any hours. And um, I am going to uh, discuss another one, which is... Uh, minimum and I'm going to say this returns minimum number or this return maximum number and uh, again a uh, copy and paste here And we get the maximum number. And the number will be 99. So again, we can verify this really uh, by doing this. You can select all. And we, let's just select vacation hours. Okay. So I just select vacation hours here and uh, execute. So uh, these numbers are just random. This will not tell me anything, but at least I see 99. I don't see another one. 
um, 0. So to do this, I can say uh, order by, and again, my assumption is, you know, uh, uh, basic SQL, SQL syntax. So if you execute this, I get, you can see here the 0, 0, 0, and we do out 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. And you can choose to select distinct if you want to just get a, a few records to see the number. But um, uh, from here, really, you can see the number, the highest number is 99, and the lowest number is um, um, 0. And uh, really, if you want to get the minimum number, because we know you have settled by ascending order, by default it's ascending, you can just do this top one and execute. That's how to get a minimum number. In case you forget the, uh, the, the function, how to do that. And uh, to get the maximum number. And if you want a scalar value, which is 1, all you need is to sort this by descending. And you can just select top 1. So if I execute this, I'll still be able to get the maximum number. So that's it for now. Um, let's see here. If you go back here, um, the exercise here would be um, to try to do this by using maybe, you can even use business entity, but that's too easy. How about you use sick leave? Okay, so um, the exercise here, I always like to leave with the exercise. That way you practice and understand better. Size um, would be I'm going to say calculate. count sum summation average taking out we did with minimum and maximum So you do the calculation of a, of a, a sick leave. Hours. Let me do a collection here. And uh, I am going to bring this here and uh, you can include the where clause to verify your data and I'll just add here the secret hours I think I got the column right and all you need is to calculate um, the count uh, summation average and you can do the calculate average by this to verify by uh, doing uh, summation divided by count and then uh, uh, minimum and maximum and they can use uh, this technique to verify your results so if you just select all order by um sick leave hours uh, you should be able to scroll up all the way up to get the minimum value and all the way down to get the maximum value if you have sorted by ascending order so thank you very much for that and um, now let's um, do something which is more technical here okay so
um, let's go ahead and um, start uh, to use some wear clothes and some um, grouping here and uh, yeah let's continue with this video I was gonna stop but um, I think it's better to be in one video so that you guys can see everything okay so first of all I am going to write a syntax here so let me save this uh, uh, let me save this query and uh, I'll save it somewhere else and um, I'm gonna say SQL function and use aggregate and uh, let's write a full SQL statement here so it's select all from I'm gonna use from here it will be table name so this is our full syntax syntax okay and then we're gonna have from table you have a where cause where I'm gonna say condition and then uh, we say group by so that's the next we're gonna be using group by if you like to group by certain column so here we say column and then we do have a uh, having close and I'm gonna say expressional condition so whenever you're using aggregate function and probably I'm gonna put your AGG uh, for aggregate okay whenever you're using aggregate um, we group by having no group by per se but we have filtered the values by having and not their cause and you'll see how that works since you know the syntax should be easy to start working. Oh no. Queries. So I'm going to start with count. <clears throat> so I am going to copy this statement as always so I'll say um, use adventure so I'm just gonna use it here go and then this is a record so we know the basics that if you like to count um, Yes, how many employees we can just do as easy as this and we get the number of employees right but the question is um, if let's say you like to return the number of employees per each title here okay so you're gonna know how many employees have tool designer title or senior designer engineer and all that how do we do that so um, what we really do is we write um, same select statement we are going to count job title and I'm gonna drop this down here and looking at our um, syntax we don't have a where cause yet so I'm just going to 
grouped by. So if I execute this really, I'm just going to count all the titles, which is just going to be 290. But let's say we want to group by, we want to see the total number of titles. When I see the count per group per title, I can say uh, group by, and the best is going to be small job title. Okay, so we will see here. But uh, as you can see, I'm going to rename this here. I'm going to call this job title count. Okay. But if you take a look over here, it really doesn't look good. So I'm, what I did here is just rename this real quick. I didn't want to make assumption, you know. And uh, if you take a look, really, it doesn't tell us what these titles are, right? So to do that, or if you like to display this information, um, I can go ahead and uh, uh, add this job title here. So I can add as a column. And now... I'll be able to see the job title and the count, respective count of employees. So we know accountant, we do have two accountants, we do have three accounts receivable specialist, one accounts manager, nine buyer here, and so forth, really. Okay, uh, we do have our product supervisor, WC50, we just three and we do have 26 and uh, from here really you can count the maximum number of employees job the job title with the most uh, employees by just doing max here comma max and all that good stuff really so but I, I want to show you again these titles here then oh they are that's good it looks uh, you know it, it looks the um, um, ordered already by job title but we can also add um, order by job title um, that way you know maybe if you like descending or ascending and you see they're all aligned here okay so if you like to get them And this is really not job title, but this is per se, yeah, it's a job title count, really. And uh, we can use any account here. We can use employee ID or login ID to count the employee count. So uh, this is more of an employee count, if you think about it. And uh, for it to make more sense, I just use the login, really. And we should be, get, should be getting the same results. And we can verify. We don't have a login. So let me see what crown we have here. Username. Login ID. So really, I'm counting a uh, number of logins, but I'm grouping by job title. So this, in other words, we are looking um, uh, how many employees hold a certain position or has or have a certain job title. So you can see here. And... Uh, Let's say you don't care about one, maybe two. Uh, you don't care about maybe uh, three. You just want to um, um, focus on um, uh, employee count that, that is more than 10, let's say. Say maybe you're working on a certain project you want to either uh, lay off some of the stuff so you want to see or maybe to um, do a better job in a, a, a shift management, assigning shifts, so like to see um, the position that has more than 10 employees so that you can distribute uh, work equally, okay? So um, we can choose you see right now I order by title but I can choose to order by count okay I can do this count and this will order by ascending order so it will start from one 
all the way to the maximum, I think, which is 26. And again, you can do descending. I just do small letter, doesn't care really. And you will see again these. And if you need a top 10, you can just select here top 10. But let's say you want uh, to filter further where um, you want where the job um, the employee count is more than 10, which is just this. How do we do that? So let's see if we can do a, a using a count. So I can say where. And remember, I showed you the syntax. Uh, and I'm going to delete. So if I use where here. So where. And uh, this time I'm going to say count is greater than 10. Watch. This pros an error. Okay, so if I move it to uh, here, again, you're going to see an error. So where calls come right after from. And that's really um, 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 the main focus. So that's really the syntax. And that's why I started with this. You see, we, we select from that table. You put your where calls, group by. Um, having and then you can all have order but you sell big the statement goes and i'll say a column or columns okay so that's the full syntax really uh you can see i'm missing a couple of things here but at the same time if we do this let's try to do this and see if that works okay so this doesn't work and uh, you can see the error message says an aggregate may not appear in the where calls unless it is a subquery contained in a having calls or in a select list. So the reason why um, this value is calculated is aggregate function. You cannot put aggregate function in a where clause. Okay, and that's why we are using a different so here i'm gonna remove this and i'll add here after group by uh, i will add my having this and this should work so having so group by really group by um, groups the rows by the column is specified and having having is used and you can see the do about where having is used to filter the records that have been grouped by or we can say we use uh, having to filter aggregated information aggregate the aggregate information here okay so that's another interview question to be honest um, we don't use uh, aggregated function in our calls, and if we try to do that, we are going to get an error message. I am going to work on just one aggregated function, which is count. But once you understand uh, how this works, that means you should be able to really um, apply to any aggregated function. So um, I'm looking here, what we can else we can do. Oh, so where clause, for example, now, if you want a filter, let's say you just want male employees or female employees or uh, marriage status where single or married, you can use your where clause as well. So I'm just going to um, copy this in so that you can see how, how big we can get. So I'll say where uh, maybe you, you just want a female. So you can say gender equals to female. Now you can use where uh, having gender equals to a female or F. Um, it may work and where and having clothes, but the only thing is. Uh, it beats the purpose of you using this view. This is mostly for um, to filter aggregated information. 
So any other filter, really, you can just use it in a way because it works better that way. So now, oh, I don't have any. That's weird. Let me see again my agenda. What's going on here? Oh, because you are looking for more than 10. So there's no any female where the login is more than 10. So I'm just going to see, I'm going to change this to more than um, one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the query doesn't lie. So let's see here. Oh, now we do have so many, but at the maximum you can see it's just eight. Um, um, and that's why the reason why really we are getting a um, uh, we are not getting any data really so yeah group helps us to summarize or to uh, group identical columns now um, uh, since we know the number of male and female here yeah, I'm just gonna um, uh, change so let's say if you want to get the total number of uh, job title per gender as well so I'm just gonna move this you can add another column here so that you can see the gender how many uh, um, uh, female hold a certain title and how many males um, and we can start really simple with just um, gender and I remember, always remember, and I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave as one here for now. But always remember that whenever you group by that column, you're gonna have to put it in a uh, group by. Otherwise, um, you're gonna run into issues. And I can tell you, or I'll show you. So as you can see, we do have a total of um, 200 and six employees that are male and um, 84 that are female. Now I can add job titles here to see. So I can say job title. Okay, now uh, let's pretend um, um, that I forgot to add that job title to group by. I'll get an error, watch. Yes, you see that? Column job title is invalid in in the select statement because it's not contained in either aggregate an aggregate function or the group by cause. So or whenever you add a fun, uh, uh, a column here, you need to add as a group by so that you tell SQL to group by job title and gender as well. So now if you execute, we'll get um, uh, a male, and you can um, really order by probably uh, gender so if you want to see just all male or female but these are the we are ordering by this count here by descending but you can choose to order by gender that way you see all males with the titles and then down the road you can see all female with the titles and the group by let me execute and see And uh, um, exercise would be uh, try to sort by, or maybe group by marital status, or maybe salary flag. I think this is just one in the zero. Yeah, or maybe you may find now, really. Um, you can use birth date. We haven't done any of um, date and time function yet. But uh, we can go by even birth year or birth month or birth year and month, but uh, we haven't done that, so um, I'm not gonna uh, do with the date. So the exercise here, you can do the same thing. Uh, go by marital status. Which is this guy here, Maricho status. OK. 
okay but um because these are so many values here i would like to do another example here and uh, you can use another table which is select all from person to person here right we have worked on uh, before on this work so if you execute here you're gonna see you can go by year maybe title so you're gonna have now mr and mrs and i don't know what else you have but to find the values here i'm stepping out of the topic a little bit i can do this uh, where i can do the title and i'll do just distinct and if you execute i think oh we do have uh, about six titles and now value okay but yeah now you know you can use distinct you just select the title this will just uh return only unique rows i mean unique values in that column but i'm going to use a different column which is human resources the department and uh, if you execute this i get an error why because you don't have a human schema so i'm gonna change here to human resources the department if you execute this i'll get this and see these are just 16 rows okay and um we can just do first time if you wanna uh, uh, get a list of all the departments you can use count right count and you can say oh well, you can count department id to be specific so this should work 16 okay and i'll just um, comment this out And here, um, really, uh, it's the same as department ID. Okay, so if you take a look here, uh, using this scenario distinct, we can see how many groups we have. Right, we see a couple of groups. Um, we can use distinct, and here I'll say from department table, but I'll select distinct group name, and that's how many groups we have. We just about have six groups, really. So now I can try to check out of all these six groups how many departments does each group has okay so all we do is um we use this select statement and i can um add that group name here as a column but this will throw us an error before i do that can you please try to guess what I'm missing from this? And I'm gonna give you five, four, three, two, one. So I just gave you five seconds and you, you guys are smart, you guess is right. Uh, you need to have a group by cause. So whenever you add function here, you can go ahead and uh, specify uh, group by and um, use that group by in column so if you execute you'll see um, executive general and administration has five and we do have two and two and two and you have 20 you can order by to see who was the highest you can order by rule count descending to see what has the highest number of departments and uh, we see this number you can take a screenshot or verify from our statement here 
and you can see development you have two cells too and uh, to do that you can also um, order by group order by group name so this sometimes may be used to um, find the duplicates so if you do have a table with duplicate employees or dif duplicate products you can use this function you can go by uh, let's say if it's employees you can use the uh, um, employee number and you can say having a count greater than just like this having a count or login id greater than one that way you know uh, if there are some duplicates or not but let's go back here so if i select this group by i'll see executive there are five inventor there are two development and such there are three and uh, if you execute this it should be the same and the or oh, if your case uh, uh, department that have or group department that have more than one or more than two group groups I mean more than two departments you can say having um, department ID greater than two that means here i'm expecting the same two departments which is uh, research and development and executive general and administration yes so we haven't done join yet but um if you'd have done that already we could have uh, joined these two tables employees and a department that way um we uh, group by department we can count how many employees are there in each department and all that good stuff uh, one more example before i close this i'm gonna go back to my employees table bear with me here we are moving from one department um, to another So I'll just open a new query here, execute this. In other words, I can come back here and I can count really how many employees I have and I can use login ID and uh, I can check the maximum number of hours. And this will just return one value really. So maximum number of hours we're just going to say vacation hours and maybe minimum number of vacation hours just going to say uh, vacation hours and uh, if I execute this uh, this will give me the total number of employees that's the maximum number and this is the minimum number and uh, you can even calculate the average And uh, also, you can calculate the total number or the total sum. Really. So if I execute this, it will give me a difference. So and I can go ahead and rename. Maybe this is employee and always be descriptive, guys. Um, I didn't rename these columns, but whenever you're doing. Make sure that you are descriptive so that uh, your customers or your clients know what's going on. So this is going to be maximum vacation hours. So I'm just going to say max. Okay, let's do this. Um, this is going to be minimum. I'm just going to say min. Here I'm just giving them column ideas. Here I'll say average. And the last one, but not least, I'm going to say total vacation hours, and we can execute. 
and we get all this so if you want to track one department really you can use join to get that department um, or if you want just mail you can just use a where cause here to get the employee count that is mail and i know it was two or six so we can just do here and you can observe um, some of the numbers may change so i can say where gender equals to m and we can do for marital status and all other related system and you can see the number of hours changed uh, the average didn't change really uh, you see the now account change a little bit we know uh, we do have about two or six now and now uh, you can use this flag here maybe it's a bit one or zero salary flag whatever you want to use on your way up close on your way up calls really and all that um so let's see if we can get one more oh product table here oh uh, this is just products uh we do our product model product sub list purchase order details let me see what's in this table so another work for you guys can be if you come to this table um, you see like product here and uh, let me um, order by product ID so product ID if you get the product ID and you come to this table products you should be able to see the product name let's I don't want to go to design really I want to go to top 10 so if I come back here uh, if you say product one it's a, a adjustable race product two is bearing ball BBB ball bearing is product ID number three but so these are the products here I can see this is our product one so if you want to calculate the total uh, price or maybe average price per each product in this table um, you can uh, group by products here so and if you have learned to join you can join to group uh, everything by product you can put uh, group by purchase order if you want to get the total count and all that good stuff last but not least uh, these functions are built in and I'll show you where to find them but don't change them and uh, we do have something we call user defined and built-in functions Whatever we're doing, these are built-in functions. User functions um, uh, are functions that a developer can create, even an analyst, if they are good in uh, SQL and uh, database development work. But I just show you where to find these functions. So if you go to database, you go to programmability, you go to functions, and if you scroll down, to I think let me try here first aggregate functions and uh, system functions and aggregate functions if you uh, open you will see average you see count you will see maximum minimum and some and there are some many more we didn't go through I just um, uh, did a few of them here just the ones we use daily okay so that's really uh, aggregate functions and this is how you find them again you go uh, to your adventure works programmability functions system functions and you can see these aggregate functions then you can see other functions too um, really we're gonna go next to do date and uh, uh, time functions again we're just gonna get few of them uh, go through them with uh, examples and all that so that you get really good experience and i'm gonna go ahead and save these queries if you want them thank you very much i'll talk to you guys soon have a nice day